Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Centennial Open House, honoring the UB School of Pharmacy on this September 20th, 1986, the 100th anniversary of the formal opening of the school. September 20th, 1986, marked the 100th anniversary of the University of Buffalo School of Pharmacy. The two-day centennial event drew scores of people, including veteran pharmacists and druggists, as well as descendants of the school's early graduates. Highlighting the open house was the unveiling of a series of portraits of the eight School of Pharmacy deans, created by Orchard Park artist Diane Steinwatz Case. It will be on permanent display in the school's newly created Pharmacy Museum in Cook Hall, a gift from the UB Pharmacy alumni. The guests toured the exhibit room, viewing historical materials and artifacts relating to pharmacy and the university. Many of the items were donated to the museum, while others were on loan for the ceremony. One of the features of the open house was a special postal substation which offered commemorative postal caches, including collector's envelopes with pharmacy commemorative stamps and a cancellation design noting the school's 100th anniversary. The guests were also given a tour of the classrooms and laboratories by pharmacy students and faculty to see firsthand the many demonstrations depicting the modern day technology in pharmaceuticals. David Triggle, Dean of the UB School of Pharmacy, received checks and plaques from alumnists now connected with major pharmaceutical firms and related businesses. Well, on behalf of the school and the faculty and students, I'm really grateful for this. It's a, it's a recognition of the relationship that we've had for many years and I think will extend for many more years. And this will occupy a place of significance in the school. Thank you very much. The chairman of the centennial celebration, Harold Reese, tells us what it was like in pharmacy school 100 years ago. In 1886, when the School of Pharmacy was founded, and when pharmacy was founded, UB at that time only consisted of a medical school. UB was founded in 1846, was just a medical college for those 40 years. At that time, there was no prior educational requirement for either pharmacy or for medicine. In 1905, pharmacy established a one-year high school requirement. In 1918, that went up to two years, and in the late 1920s, it went up to four years. The first session ran, I believe, 20 weeks from September 21st, 1886 to February 22nd, 1887. The classes were held every other day, I think from about 2 o'clock to 10 o'clock in the evening. And the reason they were held every other day was to allow the students to hold down clerkships and employment. The tuition in those days, there were three basic charges in the initial pharmacy catalog. The matriculation fee was $3.00. Your laboratory fee was $2, and the charge for tuition was $50, and that was for the full year. The first class consisted of 36 people, two of whom were women. When a student uh, graduated in the early days, was he a, a qualified pharmacist or a druggist, or was there a difference between the two? There were two routes to travel in those days. There were druggists and there were pharmacists. Pharmacists were graduates of a pharmacy college. Druggists were people who, by virtue of experience, would be certified by the, by the state or the area. I don't know which it would have been, because at that time in Erie County, we had a county board of pharmacy. What kind of medicines were uh, prescribed in the early days? On these three shelves, we have some package medications, some of which go way back and some of which are still contemporary. For example, Sloan's liniment goes way, way back and yet it is still a product sold today, as is Father John's medicine. There are some classics on here. For example, there is Eli's Cream Bomb at the very top here, sold for 60 cents by the Wyeth Chemical Company for treating nasal catarrh. On the top shelf we here at the, have at the far right, a mustard plaster on cloth by a company known as Seabury Pharmacal Laboratories. And then you'll see Radway's Ready Relief. You'll see a little bottle in the front there. Terence Seltzer Aperient. We have a hair balsam here by Parker's. Coming over, we have Gamble's Tonic for relieving distress in stomach due to indigestion, sour stomach, and flatulence. Here's a product you don't see anymore. It's called Phylamin. It's a delectable concentrated nutrient 
and it contains fresh summer spinach juice. What was the cost of prescriptions in those days and uh, how were they handled? We've looked through some old prescription files from those days and the average price seems to be about 30 to 35 cents. All of the prescriptions were compounded prescriptions with anywhere from two to three to 10 to 12 ingredients, all of which the pharmacist prepared in the, in the pharmacy. I do want to mention that most, in fact, not even most, practically the whole exhibit is the product of the effort of one person, and that person is Maureen Triggle. She is the wife of our dean, and I think when it started out, he told her, asked her if she would take charge of the exhibit and told her there'd be about three or four weeks work involved. At this point, I think she's in her 10th month of doing this. And really, the surface has really not been scratched. There's so much to do.